And certainly a perfect evening for softball on this Tuesday. First pitch out of the hands of Sage Margeco. And Sage Margeco is a fresh face to this program out of Lamont, Illinois. And Beverly Smith is certainly excited about this new arm. One of the top recruits coming out of high school. Maddie Moore sees it in the right field, and what a great grab by Jones. And out number one is recorded. Well, when you see Sage, what does she offer you in the circuit? She is so unpredictable. And I was talking to, you know, Coach Smith when we were doing our coach's call about what she throws. <laughs> I kind of joked with her, Coach, I don't know what she throws because it's just so much of everything. And it's very rare to see a pitcher that gives you so much of different pitches. You see rise ball, you'll see curve ball, you'll see drop, you'll see change. And there's no really rhyme or reason when she's throwing those pitches consistently. So the unpredictability of her is so intriguing. First strike over, and then the next swing by Alex Brown to second base. Denver Bryant retires her and two away. I do like the start, though, of Marjetko because she hasn't seen Clemson at all. She's a freshman. The whole last matchup, it was all Elena Vodder. She threw the full 12 innings, and so give a fresh look and kind of introduce this youngster to this rivalry. Well, here's a quick early test for her with Mackenzie Clark at the plate. Number two all time in program history for home runs at Clemson. And the senior is hitting 365 on the year. It's for power and for average. Marjeko readies the pitch. That one outside for ball one. Clemson coming in 27 and 11 on the, the year out of the ACC. The pitch inside now one and two. That what arm are you side for, for Marjeko. Early on from Marjeko. Yeah, I think she's more comfortable with that arm side. She tries to go outside and catch those strikes, and she will get strikes. But when it's kind of push comes to shove, she's really comfortable, as most righties are, arm side, inside part of the plate to the right-handed hitters. And gets Clark swinging to end the inning. And Denver Bryant, the transfer for South Carolina, will lead off the second baseman. He is ready to go. And first pitch from Reagan Spencer. And Spencer, who stands in the circle, the senior who's got leadership. And boy, she's been perfect over the last two seasons when she gets to start. On paper, this is the best pitcher in the ACC. And she is, without a doubt, having herself a breakout season. You look at the scouting report, not going to blow it past you with speed, but just works up and down. You saw her go with that rise. But the majority of her pitches down in the zone, getting a lot of ground ball outs. This one inside, two balls and no strikes to Bryant, who is hitting 320, batting leadoff this season. So a little uptick when she starts off the ball game. Right away, we're seeing Spencer establish the upper part of the zone, which is kind of interesting, because if you scout her, you think drop ball pitcher, look down, she gets all of her outs via the ground ball, and so how do you counter that? Well, I'm going to show you something that maybe I didn't show you in our last matchup. As we mentioned before, going the distance into extra innings. It was 12 innings that decided this first meeting last month. And now, Clemson seeking to pick up a win on the road because it's major for South Carolina to get that win at McWhorter Stadium. When we talk about what happened in that last meeting, Spencer, who threw five innings against the Gamecocks, the right back at you, 
to the pitcher, and David Bryan is aboard safely with a base hit. There's some emotion coming out of Denver Bryant there. Running all the way down to first base, full count, set the tone early, hits this ball just well up the middle. And this is a good job by Reagan Spencer to even knock this ball down. It's so tough to get that ball back at you as a pitcher. You have almost zero reaction time. But explosive start to this game offensively. And that's what you want to see if you're Coach Smith in this rivalry. She felt like it was time for this group to explode or at least awaken even further offensively. Riley Blampede, who was the hero last time they met, lines this one down the third base line, and they're gonna call that one foul. It's 0-2, but Riley Blampede has been one of those cornerstones of this offense and for this team because she has just been steady Eddie and consistent throughout. No doubt, and there's a lot of new pieces to the team, even though I did say there's a lot of seniors, a lot of new freshmen, a lot of transfers like you're talking about. So you have that one consistent piece, and that's Blampede. Reaches out for that one. Alex Brown flips it over to Maddie Moore, and the leadoff runner is retired. So the fielder's choice, and Blampede stands at first. Bryant goes back to the dugout for the force out. It's kind of interesting because if you were just talking about how Reagan got the start in the last matchup, and you can tell that South Carolina is pretty comfortable. They're seeing a lot of pitches. They're swinging at strikes when they're hitting the ball. It's it's hard off the bat. You saw the foul ball down the left field line from Blampede. Well, just keep an eye on that. I'm sure Clemson has other arms ready, but you can just kind of tell there's a little bit of comfort right now offensively for South Carolina. In this group coming off of their last SEC series against Mississippi State. They dropped that series and offensive production was something that Bev Smith wanted to see more of. They were shut out a couple of times before taking the win Sunday as that wild pitch gets past Abby Vieira. And so Blampede now in scoring position with one out. And Zoe Leno at the plate, the player that we featured in the South Carolina lineup. Good pitch in there for a strike. And taking a look at just what this offense has produced thus far, not what they're capable of last in number of SEC categories. However, Zoe Leno lines this one in the left and a great grab by Ariel Oda to rob that hit and two down. So some nice plays in the outfield already we've seen on both sides. Yeah, this is the third straight hard hit ball off the bat of South Carolina. But how about Oda out in left field laying it out? She knows the importance of this matchup. If that ball gets past her or if it's down, you don't know how this inning's gonna turn. You gotta use that as a pitcher and just like see your defense laying it out for you, getting that big out. And obviously, having your defense back you up has got to feel good for Reagan Spencer. It's got to feel good also for Sage Marjeko, who we saw was backed up by Kiana Jones in right field. So both teams trying to click on all cylinders early on as Jim Cummings, another batter from the left side, stands in. Senior fouls that one out of play. It is kind of interesting, if it, just talking about the struggles that maybe offensively South Carolina is seeing, but when you get a midweek matchup like The 1-1 one, one to Jen Cummings and fouls that off. You're coming down the stretch of the season when this can be the catalyst, as you mentioned, Kinsey. And from what you've seen, how have both teams kind of handled the emotion of, of this rivalry? Yeah, I'm really liking the swings from South Carolina. Even though two outs, just 
good at bats, like this at bat right here, no matter the result, Cummings is seeing, taking balls, swinging at strikes, her foul balls seem solid. And it's also the second time that they're seeing Spencer and getting a look at her. So the data there is helping so much. This one lifted into right field, allowed out to in the inning. A runner left strand. Oh, the first team to do it since UConn last in it in 2016. And Dawn Staley's group, what a tremendous story it was, replacing all five starters from a season ago. And this unlikely group, as she said, made it all the way through and hoisted the trophy in the end. I love it. There were just rumors, right, that we were going to get some players, maybe throwing out the first pitch. And then, you know, you see them walk out and you're like, oh, this is so cool. I just, you know, it makes, takes me back to playing college. And, you know, when you have success with, you know, your other teams, your department, you feel that success throughout the entire athletic department. And it's just what college sports is all about. And we were having some fun watching them. They got to the ballpark pretty early and they were hanging out in the bullpen and like talking to Coach Smith and getting a look at the pitch comm. And as competitive athletes should, you want to know what you're doing and get all the info. So a lot of fun with those two. Now, obviously, you know what it's like to pitch. But when we saw Raven, she was like, eh. I don't know I about know. that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a nice walk underhand, right? <laughs> yeah, they had some, okay, here we go. There's, there's the clips that we were watching. They they were hanging out for, in the bullpen for like 10 minutes. They were really like digesting and taking it in. And there were a couple of wows in there. So it's always fun when you get the respect of another team. Like this, they just won the national championship and they're over there in the bullpen going, wow, that's cool. So. That's just one of the really, really neat things about our our college game and seeing all these different athletes that are the most elite at what they do and sharing the love. The one two to Julia Noller that hung up there for a little bit, timed it, but foul. Marjeko, who had an eight pitch inning to start off this game, and now seeing Noller take a number of pitches, the freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida for the Tigers. Seventh pitch of the at bat on the way. And Noller sends this one in the center field and out of reach. A solo shot into deep center and Clemson's on the board first. Okay, freshman. We're talking all this South Carolina, and she wants to turn the conversation to Clemson real quick. This is an outside pitch, one, two count, a little bit elevated, but just sees it so deep, is so patient in that at bat, an absolute no doubter. You can see Blam P just kind of doing the courtesy jog, watching it clear out. And how about the stomp at home plate? Are you kidding? Fifth home oh, run impressive. of the season for Julia Noller, certainly impressive indeed, because that at bat, we talked about eight pitches in total for three batters in the first inning for Sage Marjeko and Noller on that seventh, seventh pitch, drove it into the deepest part of the park. Well, you see the stat there, first home run since February 14th, and not because she's been in a slump, she hasn't been in the lineup. This is a freshman, the Florida Gatorade player of the year that has been missing from this Clemson offensive lineup. They get her back last weekend, kind of get her rhythm going. She sits in the four hole as a true freshman and she delivers. It's a huge ad and kind of a get back for Coach Rittman. But John Rittman just talked about just, you know, having the fluctuation in the lineup and players that are available as opposed to who isn't, but this team is anchored by some great players like uh, Aliyah Longaleo, one of the seniors who knows what it takes year in and year out. Hey, look, back-to-back -back super regional appearances for these Clemson Tigers. And since they came on the scene five seasons ago, seasons ago with softball being introduced, they have quickly made their name known in this space. Go, 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 
up the middle and a base hit for Longaleo. So back-to-back -back hits for the Clemson Tigers and Longaleo is aboard safely with a single. Another two strike swing here. And this was something that we were talking to Coach Rittman about is their two strike approach, their two out approach, just being that clutch player. And he said, we've been missing that a little bit at times. It's not like our offense is bad. It's just we haven't had, you know, the right hits at the right moment. We haven't been as good as I've wanted us to be with two strikes. And so you can tell right now an emphasis between the freshman and then the senior just clutch with two strikes. I don't know if it's a shorter swing. I don't know if it's a pitch that you're dividing the plate on, but you can tell it's something that they've been working on going into this game. We spoke of the success that John Rittman has had, five and one against South Carolina. And as we mentioned, a team that has been consistently ranked in the polls year in and year out, coming in and facing off against an in-state foe. Bev Smith looking on. The leader for the Gamecocks, Lindsey Garcia, readies for the pitch, swings and fouls it off. Garcia, another one of those players, back from injury, reinserted into the lineup, and again, something that a coach has to balance, no matter what side you're dealing with. Bev Smith has had to do it throughout her career, and. 14 seasons at the helm of this South Carolina Gamecock, pro Gamecock program. Just adds a little something to this game in particular with South Carolina taking down Clemson back on March 20th, getting the first win against Clemson in program history. You saw how Clemson has the record five and one. It was five and oh. And so you kind of get that monkey off of your back. And then on the flip side, Clemson's like, wait a minute, that's not how we've been doing it. We need to get back and what went wrong. What's the game plan gonna look like? Get this, se get this series back even one apiece for this season. Well, good swings here in this inning from the Clemson batters. One, two on the way. It's the first changeup I've seen from Margeco. You can tell it's not a pitch that she's going to throw multiple times, but she needs it. You need an off speed pitch when you're throwing seven pitches in an at bat. And that's the third batter in a row where we've gone deep with multiple pitches and a lot of foul balls. Just need something to slow the hitter's eyes down, and then you can bring it back up with the velo and go upstairs. Goes upstairs, and this one, is it going to be playable? No, on the other side of the net. That is the 10th foul ball of the inning. So you talked about a lot of balls being fouled off. Double digits now here for Margeco. I think that was a clean catch. I just want to make note of that. She's got her glove, too, so, like, so cool. Oh, she's all smiles. Look at that. She'll never forget it. Keeping this one alive, and Denver Bryant trots it to the outfield, one away. You, you, you think about the smiles that you were just talking about with that young lady. We saw Raven and Camilla, who threw out the first pitch, and the growth that we have seen across women's sports. 18 plus million who viewed and tuned Ooh. in for that national championship game, outpacing the men's national championship game last night. You think about what we have seen year over year with the Women's College World Series and how it continues to grow. The excitement is there and as Coach Don Staley always wears the shirt, everybody watches women's sports, we see that there is an appetite that has been there and the more investment that we have seen, the greater the numbers have grown. That's how I grew up watching this sport. I grew up living in Tucson and going to games since I, oh gosh, three, four years old, not even knowing what I was watching, but then like really just growing up watching the sport and developing a love for it. And then all of a sudden like, okay, do I want to play? 
But I think the difference now with this generation is you can not only watch it in person like that youngster, we just saw her make the catch, but you can tune in on your phone, which is so accessible. You can watch it on ABC and be a part of that 18 million viewership. You can watch Nebraska Volleyball sell out a stadium with 92,000. Abby Vieira tags this one into the gap in the right center. And Clemson adding to their lead here with a two, or with an RBI rather, from Vieira. It's a nice piece of hitting here. This is a pitch that's supposed to be outside. You can see it be elevated a little bit too much, kind of in her, her wheelhouse, and Vieira does not miss. That's the third really well hit ball in this inning. Clemson's fired up. You can tell there's a little something going into this game. They did not like losing to South Carolina in their last matchup, and you can tell. After further review, the runner did not leave early at first base. RBI double to make it 2 nothing. Here's Kaylee Johnson. And Johnson swings through that when the right fielder. A freshman out of Wesley Chapel in the Tampa area. Showing bunt there, that ball high. Now one and one. Swings through that one. So Jory Hurd coming in, working ahead in the count now. One and two to the first batter she faces. In the righty, Kylie Johnson. Hurd also has a really good change. She can use every at bat. Missing with her curve. I don't think that's supposed to be upstairs. She's trying to cut it across, and I feel like she's just missing with her hip a little bit. Full count now to Johnson. And gets her swinging. We're coming up with the right pitch at the right time, and Jory Hearn retires the first batter she faces now, two down in the inning. I like that she went right back to the curve, even though she had missed on two pitches prior. Sometimes you know what your best pitch is and you know when you need it, even though you've missed high. And that one still has a little bit of up tail to it. Not sure if that's intentional or not with it out of the zone, but just be comfortable with it and then go back to it again, even if you have a left-handed batter. Just kind of get yourself that pace. Sometimes it takes a couple of pitches, especially coming off the bench and into relief. He stands in, and Ariel Oda, who made that great grab in left field last inning, now stands in the nine hole hitter, hitting at 333 on the season. A sixth year senior in this program for John Rittman. She was. player that he mentioned that can start rallies, can get things going here with two outs, wanting to see if she can potentially bring home the air and keep the inning going, turn over that lineup. Here's the off-speed offering. Another full count now. Inside and the one three put out to March 20th. And now Keanu Jones leading it off here for the Gamecocks in the bottom of the second inning. 
in what will be a really big weekend in college softball as South Carolina is gonna be hosting Arkansas. Clemson has that big series coming up against Duke. And that's gonna be a, a juggernaut of a series as the Duke Blue Devils coming in number one. Yeah, this is without a doubt, I think the toughest stretch just in terms of mental and Great grab there and run from Mackenzie Clark covering a whole lot of territory in the outfield to grab the first out of the inning. That ball was in the air for a very long time. I was just wondering to see if it was going to stay in the ballpark. A little bit of a communication at the last second between Oda and Clark. These two have been together a long time, so there's a lot of familiarity there. And you can see Clark wanted that one. She wanted it a little bit. She's fired up about it. In your estimation, you know, what have you witnessed thus far? You know, we, we saw that hitting started off this season and it seems like offense kind of is one of the dominant storylines. Of course, you may feel a certain type of way about that as a <laughs> former pitcher, but defensively, like, you know, when you look at each phase of the game, what's stood out to you so far, Kenzie? Oh, you know, I think the, the veteran um, class that will be leaving us after this graduation, you know, Mackenzie Clark kind of being one of those and of course Oda she's like the most veteran of all the veterans but <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of older players that we're going to be saying goodbye to after this year and then it's going to be a really weird reset I feel like next season with you know normalcy which is kind of funny to say but there's so much that goes into the the extra year the COVID players if you will that had that extra year to get better and understand what they want to do in their program, how they want to leave their legacy. And you can kind of go through every single, you know, big time program. And there's a bunch of those COVID seniors that are in their last lap. And so, you know, whether that's pitching or hitting defense, you know, someone that's been holding it down at shortstop, like a Logaleo or, you know, Ariel Oda, and Reagan Spencer, you know, she's having herself a breakout year, but I just feel like the veteran class across college softball is really strong. And you saw there the strong effort in the circle from Reagan Spencer getting her first strikeout of the game, retiring Anaya Black, Bree Warren, who comes into this program, transferring over from Texas A&M. And this is a player that you were intrigued by and had a conversation with Coach Bev Smith when we talked with her earlier this week about a player that you're waiting to, for her to click. Totally. I just, I remember watching her at Texas A&M transferring over. I know what kind of swing, what kind of power she's capable of. Had a clutch hit against Mississippi State where they got the victory, able to secure the one game. I just feel like her swing could be a difference maker. It's just, you know, the everyday consistency of seeing it and what that looks like for her. A couple years back when she started off at Texas A&M was a, First team, all SEC selection and all freshman team. And now Warren puts this one into play. Great scoop and play by Maddie Moore, but the throw off the mark a little bit, and Warren is safe. Well, she's kind of laughing about that one. This would have been a Sports Center top 10 play if she nails down this throw. This ball's hit very well. She's way up the middle. She has to get rid of it quickly because Bree Warren runs pretty well from the left side, but the throw is just too high and away from Noller at first. Also worth mentioning, Tiffany, the infield for Clemson shifting a little bit. You see Maddie Moore now at short, Aliga, Aliyah Longaleo at third, Alex Brown is at second. Something they did last weekend against Syracuse and you know, defense has been a little bit of an issue for Clemson. You know, Coach Redman will tell you that. it has been some moments this season in big games where maybe giving away a, a hit there and not securing an inning there, but just trying to shift it up a little bit. Good job there for Vieira behind the plate to keep that in front of her and Warren at first base. We got the base hit with two outs. 
Two hits given up by Reagan Spencer so far. Here's Julia Desiderio, the Gamecocks catcher. And pops watching Texas beat Oklahoma in that second game. And then, of course, the rubber match. It's like, okay, but really, can they take a series? And they did. And it was something that shifted the rankings, a lot of talk about, okay, now who's number one? Can it still be Oklahoma because they've been so dominant? You can make that argument. Should it be Texas because of course they beat Oklahoma? Yeah, of course. And then of course Duke is over there in the ACC just quietly having their best season ever. There's a lot of argument for Duke. Should they be the number one ranked team? So it's a fun time, it's a fun week because it's shaken up a little bit in our sport. For the job that Marissa Young has done over at Duke has been pretty incredible. 33-3 and three on the season. And again, Clemson trying to gear up in this midweek matchup against South Carolina before they take on the Blue Devils. This one hit deep and out of here! Come on, Maddie Moore, come through. The solo shot, second home run of the game for the Clemson Tigers. It's Maddie's eighth of the season, and it's 3-0 Clemson. Coach Rittman has said that Maddie Moore has been our best hitter this year and just quietly puts her in the leadoff spot because of that reason. This is such a solid swing for her. She sees it so deep. It's always so impressive when you have the power to, a, to the right side as a right-handed hitter. Big stomp on home plate, flex on him, all the things from Maddie Moore. Game up at three, but it was Vodder's game, no doubt about it. At one point in that game, retired 14 straight for the Tigers. But that was last month this time around let's see how the tigers approach and game plan vauder they've had success tonight four hits three runs put up alexis brown who grounded out the last time up puts it on the ground again and it's a fair ball just past the diving first baseman and a slide into second and a double for Alex Brown. This is how you have to approach Elena Vodder is go down in the zone and just hit it hard. Pound the dirt because you know that's where the ball's going. So she gets something inside, quick hand, she turns on it, but she hits it so hard. She lets her speed do the rest of the work. Get that double sliding in there. And just kind of turn to the dugout and say, look, even though they can have a pitching change, we're gonna keep this momentum going. And I got you, I'm gonna start it. Clemson batters seeing the ball well tonight. Mackenzie Clark gets hit by the pitch and she will take first base. So the first two batters aboard that Elena Vauder has faced. I know we mentioned it briefly, but I think it's worth repeating again that no Val Cagle in this game for Clemson is out with concussion protocol. And so I think that's also why you're gonna see this, this change bringing in Vodder right here, right now in the third inning. The grounder and a nice flip from Blankenship. She gets the runner at second base, but quick exchange from gloves to ball from Blankenship at second base. Runners at the corners now for Clemson. Really nifty play here from Blankenship up the middle. Got to get an out somewhere, looking to maybe see if they could turn two, but just the way that the ball was coming into Denver Bryant, unable to get the double play on that. But that's Leah Lungaleo takes ball one on the outside part of the plate. She singled in her first AB. You see, 27 RBI on the season. I think we're gonna see a lot of those change-ups from Vodder. 
maybe also her rise ball a little bit more just because it's a lot of AB she's been facing against Clemson. Your eyeballs as a hitter when you're facing Vodder are down. You're just looking down. That's where you're going. It's kind of like when you're facing Millie Thompson. You pick one zone. And so, you know, when you've seen hitters over and over again as a pitcher, you can feel that for sure. And, you know, what, what else haven't they seen? Do I need to throw maybe two change-ups per batter instead of one? Do I need to go at least one rise ball on the first two pitches? Lugaleo, the grounder over the third base. And the runner advances to second, but now two down. That's a great play from Zoe Leno. That was sneaky. Just very quietly kept the runner in check at third, gunned it over to first base, bang, bang, play. It's a huge out. Here's Lindsey Garcia. Garcia 0 for 1 tonight. Was hitless last time she faced Vauder. And how critical would it be for Elena Vauder to come in and try to end this threat here from Clemson and not let them stretch out or widen this lead any further. Yeah, 100%. She knows what her offense can do. They scored six runs in their last matchup, and I feel like even though they haven't put any runs up yet on the board, I feel like their ABs have been looking good. A lot of game left here just in the third inning. Just trying to get comfortable coming in with a couple runners on. Water shakes off a couple of pitches, sees the one she likes, and gets the strikeout. Just what she needed to end the inning. Elena Vauder comes in relief. Shuts down the Tigers. Uh, a lot of 30-win teams there. Oof. You expect that. But I'm going to ask, Kinsey, uh, who do you think uh, would be number one based off of what you saw? And I don't know. I'm, like, mad at our producer, Robin, for not telling me because I feel like <laughs> so in the dark. I'm like, who are they? She's like, I'm not telling you. You have to guess and figure it out yourself. But usually we're looking at this you know, in the next month, early May. So I love that we're talking about, you know, a new number one and like talking about the metrics when it comes to Selection Sunday. We're talking about that, you know, here in April so early. Okay, so the second one looks so strong to me. I mean, you look at, you know, yes, three more losses than the first one and the third one, but the RPI, the strength of schedule for me, number two is huge. Oh, okay, See? Texas. Okay. Texas like coming in, and that was the end. one that yeah. you, you you liked, right? As yes, Raymond like Spencer yep. <laughs> retires, blank and ship strikes fun. her out for out number one. Yeah, Stanford coming in to the pitcher. Remember making that Women's College World Series run a season ago? Nigeria Kennedy yeah. helping to lead the way for Jessica Allister's team. Uh, Marissa Young we talked about for Duke. But Mike White, the job that he has done with the Texas Longhorns this season, and they came out the gates hot like that. We saw them in clear water and they have not let their foot off the gas. It's kind of interesting. Those three teams to the right, it was Texas, Oklahoma, and Stanford. I think those are the three that going into the season, a lot of people were like, okay, those three are gonna, you know, show us something because of the rosters that they were coming back from. And we all watched Nyjah Kennedy do what she did at the World Series, taking Oklahoma to the brink. And so, you know, also, a little shout out to Duke because I don't think people had Duke in that conversation if you would have asked everybody at the beginning of the season, are they gonna be the number one team in the country or at least the top, you know, top four? I don't know if people would have said yes. So I think that's very exciting for our sport. It's just another storyline of a new program that's on the rise, doing new things every single year, very similar to Clemson. I just I think that's really neat to have them in the mix as well.
I love that, that's fun as we are marching our way up towards mayhem in the Women's College World Series. Coming your way as Riley Blampede gets the two out single here on that 0-2 count in the shallow center to keep the inning alive. Look, we're gonna get a lot of new eyeballs this week, right? It's, everyone's turning the page. What sports are we watching? Well, we're watching softball because it's time. <laughs> I mean, I'm always watching softball, but I understand that there's more things happening all the time. And so let's kind of get everybody up to speed about where we're at and what's been happening. Of course, we've got a big time rivalry going on here in front of us, but just in terms of where our sport is right now, because next month, hey, mm. showtime. <laughs> And this one gets past the catcher, but Blampede stays still at first. We think Florida State, obviously in the conversation, coming out of the ACC tournament champions from a season ago, national runners up, fell to Oklahoma in that champ series. Everyone's trying to take down the Sooners. And there are a lot of different contenders that are coming their way. If anything, what Texas did last weekend is spark something, you know, outside of their dugout into all of the other dugouts. Like, hey, it's doable. Like, come on, let's follow our lead. We can do this. And, you know, of course, I don't know, did you just awaken a beast in Oklahoma? Because we know what they can do every time. We've seen them go down, they respond. Of course, one of your big pieces, Valerie Cagle, not in the lineup tonight. However, you talked about getting healthy, the right players back. How has your team continued to respond without one of your key players? Yeah, you know, I think it's next woman up, you know, and we know that our players have to step up and certainly Valerie's been a huge part of our success and uh, we're missing her, but uh, you know, it's an opportunity for somebody else to step up and I mean, you see Noller playing first base, and uh, we just got her back and healthy. She's got a big hit, made a nice play to end the inning there. And, you know, Maddie Moore has just been spectacular for us the last month and um, just love the way we're playing and fighting tonight. Yeah, Coach, of course, you came up short in the last matchup, but I feel like the offense has come out with a little extra something. Is that something you guys talked about going into this matchup? Yeah, you know, I mean, definitely it was frustrating last time. I mean, Vauter just shut us down for 12 innings, and uh, – you know, we scrapped a few runs late against her, but, uh, you know, she's a very good pitcher, but I think our approach is much better tonight. We shortened up our swings a little bit, and, you know, ironically, we have two long balls to show for it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's our approach. You know, we got to stay positive. We know that she's going to be tough, and, and we've got to hit good pitches now. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate the time. Hey, thank you all. Well, Coach Rittman reference those home runs Three straight game now. Three straight games now with multiple home runs. So it's served them well so far, not only tonight but in the past few games for them as well. Remember, they handled Syracuse in that series, and so far they're carrying some of that offensive power into tonight's game against a top 25 opponent in South Carolina. And what he said is so true about shortening your swing and not trying to do too much and kind of laughing and saying, of course, well, now we have two home runs to show for it. We're working on a shorter approach, you know, trying to get those clutch hits that we've been missing at times this season. But it's so true. It's always when you're not trying to hit the home run is when the home run comes. And so sometimes you just got to have that little reset offensively about, okay, collectively, let's shorten our swings, try and hit the ball on the ground. Especially now that you're facing Vodder, let's look down in the zone and the results are coming that they're wanting. The swings have had success against the past two South Carolina pitchers. RBI double last time up for Abby Vieira. And this one a ground ball to second base, and the batter is retired. Well, this week on Sunday Night Baseball, the series finale, and the bitter rivalry between the Padres and the Dodgers, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight, Sunday Night Countdown. Shohei Otani recording multiple hits in each of the last five games, continuing to impress. 
Tiger fans have to be impressed with this 3-0 lead on the road against their in-state rival. And 152 miles, give or take, separate these two universities, the two largest in the Palmetto State. A lot to play for. Bragging rights, especially if you know, you're the team that sweeps the series. Of course, they could always meet up in postseason. There's always that possibility playing in different conferences and, of course, living around the corner from one another. But I was watching a, a video from South Carolina and on their social media, and they were getting asked about this series in the first press conference of the series. And so that kind of took me back and I was like, okay, this is what we're talking about. We are already looking forward to meeting up with Clemson and you know, getting that first win against them. And they were able to do that last month. And so you can just tell it, it means a lot. Well, quickly two outs recorded for Elena Vauder. As she faces Ariel Oda, the nine hole hitter. As you said before, one of the OGs of this program, sixth year senior, who helped start and build this foundation of the program back before they even fielded a team. A little check swing there, charging in is Blankenship and a one, two. Head coach Bev Smith, kind enough to join us now. And since Elena Vauder got called in relief, retired the last seven batters for you, what have you seen out of your veteran leader? Well, she's doing what she does, right? She's getting us ground balls and uh, staying ahead in the count. She's doing a super job. And certainly it was our plan to get to her. Where I was hoping not to bring her into about the fourth inning, but um, she's doing a great job and settling in well. Okay, I've got to ask just, I know you had some conversation with Camilla and Raven before the game about their first pitches. How well would you assess that they throw compared to their coach, Don, who did it a few weeks back? I did tell them pregame that, that Don did it from the mound. They were wanting to scoot up. <laughs> and when I told them Coach Staley did it from the mound, they immediately backed up. As they should. <laughs> yeah. And then I just want to ask a very serious question, but is your home a little bit more quiet without a certain champ Staley <laughs> staying at your house? I, 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 had a, I had a big responsibility during the Final Four, so champ, is, uh, champ who was in good hands. So uh, really proud of our women's basketball team that they could bring home the national championship. Everybody here is so proud. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for indulging. being here. <laughs> well, it's no secret that there is a great relationship and friendship between the legendary coach Don Staley and Coach Bev Smith. And Coach Staley, a huge fan of the softball program, has traveled to numerous road games and making plenty of home games. Obviously has a row of season tickets as well. And they play off of, you know, each other. And so, you know, she just doesn't leave champ in the hands of anyone. Yeah. Coach Bev Smith is a trusted friend. That's a big time responsibility. We're talking to her about it and of course how good of friends they are and been coaching alongside one another in the athletic department for a long time, but you know, she said, I'll send her daily updates of Champ and the daily videos. You saw the photo of Champ on Coach Smith's dining table, which is just hilarious. <laughs> like, I'm not going to I'm not going to be blowing up Coach Staley's phone with coach speak. I'm going to be blowing up her phone with photos of the dog, as I should. It's such an exciting time on South Carolina's campus as that one is lifted off the bat into left field from Jim Cummings and she's retired. But to amass the success that the women's basketball program has done in the time of Coach Staley, 14 seasons for Bev Smith, made a number of appearances 
in the NCAA tournament. And remember, there was that great stretch from 2013 to 2019 where she guided the program to seven consecutive NCAA tournament appearances, more than 400 career wins, a couple 40 win seasons with South Carolina. So women's athletics for the University of South Carolina is in great hands. And South Carolina a season ago was one game away from advancing to supers. They made that great run in the SEC tournament, made it all the way to the championship, and then also almost took down Florida State, had to go to that if necessary game. Lost one to zero in a heartbreaking fashion. I remember always saying, you know, obviously there were a number of seniors in that class. Jordan Fabian was one, but she wished she had Donnie Goborn for Ooh, yeah. another season. <laughs> the transfer came in last year and lit up the SEC, but she was very fortunate to get another great arm in the circle with Elena Vodder this season. You bet. Yeah, I think Coach Smith has got the transfer portal thing figured out. And so, you know, you see the success of Donnie and, you know, Vodder goes into the portal. And so that I'm sure has to do, you know, play into it a little bit. You saw one pitcher go in for one year, have tremendous success. And OK, maybe that could be a place for me as well. Because that's the same path that I'm taking. I've got one more year to go at it. Graduated from Stanford. Wanted to hit a little bit more, and you know we're seeing her do that this season. Oh, this is very important. In that strikeout, because of what I did before this pitch. Oh yeah, had a little extra grip in the cleats. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan Spencer, who has looked sharp throughout this ball game, only allowed three hits, no runs pushed across. A couple of strikeouts as well, including Kiana, Kiana Jones, who you just saw. Now Anaya Black, who struck out her first time up. And we credit Spencer with three strikeouts tonight, not two. foul ball there and it's probably obvious to the hitter at the plate but I'm still going something low and slow outside After that big something inside yep and this one can it drop it does the gap double for Anaya Black slides in and a much needed base hit for the Gamecocks and you said earlier Kinsey that the Gamecocks were getting good swings and hard contact off of Reagan Spencer's pitches. Yeah, the first two innings, they just looked very comfortable, and then Reagan Spencer came out and kind of owned the third inning, had a quiet inning, gave up a bloop single. But right there, Anaya Black, I love that at bat for her. She strikes out in her first at bat. She has the big foul ball down the line, so you're thinking, okay, she's probably going to go with the opposite, low and slow and out. I would have loved to seen that pitch more in the dirt from Reagan Spencer. That was just a little bit too elevated. But still, even if it's coming, you still have to sit on it, and it's sitting on something hard in, adjusting to the next pitch, driving it the opposite way. She's dialed in, and that's a good response for her down in that six hole. The good foul ball smacked off the bat this time of Bree Warren. Pinch runner in at second base. That's Emma Sellers, the junior. She's in scoring position. South Carolina trying to break through on the scoreboard. That one low and away for ball one.
And Bree Warren gets a hold of this one, but it stays in the park. And that ends the inning. For the Gamecocks, she and the defense have made the routine plays, some extra effort plays as well. And now Elena Vauder back in the circle. And you heard Bev Smith tell us last inning Just about the, the attitude and the feel that you have when Elena Vauder is in the circle, right? Because she has been in so many big moments. She was pitching in the Women's College World Series last year. She knows how to deal with all types of moments. And what they've asked her to do is cut the bleeding at this point, right? A three nothing ball game, so still within reach but she came in at a time back in that third inning after that solo shot from Maddie Moore. And the Tigers were going and going. And Vauder has helped to slow down these bats. I'm sure there's some people, some maybe South Carolina fans wondering, why didn't we just start Vauder if we were gonna bring her in? You know, she held down Clemson very well in that, their last outing and you heard Coach Redman say how dominant she was against us. But you just still have to think that they have a big weekend coming up. This went through the legs of Denver Bryant. They made some shifts in the infield. So Bryant moves from second base to third and this one goes through her legs. Another look at the error here. Yeah, no matter where you're playing in the infield for South Carolina, you're going to be getting ground balls because that's what Vodder does. She rolls ground balls, and that's how she gets her out. And it just looked like Denver Bryant was a little bit too much on her toes forward. Like her momentum was too far, kind of bent over and needed to back up a little bit, kind of be a little bit lighter on her feet. I think she definitely wants that one back for sure. Just kind of going back to my thought about Vodder and bringing her in now, it's right in the middle of conference play. So for South Carolina, SEC, you've got Arkansas around the corner. And she's your ace where she's going to get the Friday and probably the Sunday game. And then she might even come in on relief in Saturday. That is a lot of pitches that she's going to be asked to throw. And then you throw in a big game like this. You know, it's just something, something that Bev Smith has to make the decision about how she uses Vodder and the best option for her and the team and where they want to go in terms of postseason. You see her career ranks among active players and incredibly impressive. The number of innings that she's pitched, we talked about the last time she faced Clemson, her longest outing of the season, but third and shutouts and just a force in the circle throughout her career is Elena Vauder and she goes from one powerful conference to the next, right? Pac-12 for the first four years of her career and now into the SEC. And when you're facing top level competition week in and week out and you're the arm to go to and Kenzie, you know about that. That is not an easy task and certainly takes a lot of skill, but a lot of mental fortitude too, to make it through. Yeah, she's kind of like the, the throwback pitcher. Where she's gonna throw the full game Friday, full game Sunday, give you a little something in between and then you throw in the mid game as well. Okay, here you go, sister. What else, <laughs> what else you got in the tank? But at the same time, you're a fifth year. Let's go get it. Check out this base hit from Mackenzie Clark. And now, runners at the corners. And Clark picks up her first hit of the night. Good throw from the outfield from Jones to hold up Maddie Moore. She's a big bat, big recruit, sits in the four hole, and that is what her swing looks like. Oh. 
Led her team to a state title. Uh, Fort Myers. And really, when you look at the production for Clemson in the lineup, the top four batters have had four of the six hits tonight, two of them by way of the long ball. And so their production has been on point. The 0-2, and Noller fouls it off. And if I'm Vodder, I'm not going to give Noller anything up in the zone at all. She can, she can show her rise if she needs to and climb the ladder when it calls for it. But right now in this situation, I'm just going to go hard out, hard out, and see if I can roll the ground ball. If I get a strikeout, that's a bonus. But you saw the power there a couple of pitches ago. I'm just staying low in the zone. Fouled off. Moore at third. Clark at first. The pitch. That one pulled foul as well. I love that spot. Absolutely love that spot. And that's a veteran spot because you think about you have a hitter leaning outside, but do you have the confidence to bust her in knowing that this is a hitter who hit a home run very well in her last at bat, and now it's a setup. But it's the confidence to do it because if you miss that pitch right there, well, you're looking at what could be a big swing for the worse. And so now you set up something outside and low in the zone. Oof. I think she might have bad here. Yeah, because yeah, she's <laughs> battling away, fouling them off. Oof. I would not throw that pitch again. <laughs> a little bit too close to the play, 0 2 count. Because Adario was set up almost in the other batter's box. You can see it right there. She's at outside. Miss out. This one pulled the play at the play. The least possession of the ball. After further review, the call has been changed. Obstruction at the plate. We're having technical difficulty here. And the home plate umpire says no. And Desiderio just plays it cool. Uh, that was a, it was a tough call, tough position. You, when you look at it, as she pops up, the awareness that you have to have to get out even further to make room for the runner in the pathway. It's a lot. And it's why you go. That has to it's why you right go time. home. As, yep, yeah, it's why you go right. home as a third base runner. You have all those things. Plus, you never know. You could review the obstruction and it works out in their favor and it's kind of ironic because South Carolina was able to score the go-ahead run against Clemson last month on that exact same play. A re reviewed play at home plate that turned out to be obstruction, ruled was reversed and they got the run. So it's kind of funny that it comes back to the other side and now it's in favor for the other team. Wangaleo, the selfless teammate for the Clemson Tigers. Helped out her picture in the circle. It's a little equipment issue while in the field and now at the plate, the one-two pitch to Wangaleo. Outside for ball two. All ACC selection. And each of her first three full seasons with the Tigers. Including that third team selection last year. Kind of halfway swing. And it pops it out over to Denver Bryant. And two away.
Ball one to Lindsey Garcia. Garcia, the new, one of the new faces. Graduate transfer over from Auburn. And list this one in the right field. And that ends the inning of the year to go on tears and big runs. Made it all the way to the national championship game last year after winning the ACC tournament. Pushed, as you said earlier, Kinsey, to the brink in that winner take all game against South Carolina. And advanced to Oklahoma City after a one nothing decision. Over the Gamecocks. Yeah, some exciting things in the ACC. I think, you know, Duke with Jayla Wright, Cassidy Kurd, their pitching, you know, the, the home run hitting Hokies for Virginia Tech. They've got some big time swingers with Emma Ritter, Addie Green. And then you've got Clemson, who's kind of keeping on, doing their thing. Maybe not as much talk about them this season just because their record isn't maybe what it was a season ago. They've had the injury thing and a lot of, it, a lot of adversity. Val Cagle hasn't been in the lineup as consistently as she was last season. And so that's gonna be a huge storyline for them. Of course, she's missing tonight. Hope she's able to get back in uniform very soon. But yeah, the top of the ACC is as, as strong as it can get. And the leader of the ACC in terms of ERA coming into tonight, Reagan Spencer. She's in the circle now. Sixth in the nation. And when you think about, this is one of the ACC arms that is without a loss this season. Duke's Jayla Wright also can stake claim to that. She's just behind her, 12-0 this year. But combined 11-0 the last Two seasons for Reagan Spencer, and you see that .87 ERA for the senior. Just such a great storyline. You look at some of those big names on that list. Of course, Nigel Kennedy, Carlin Pickens, Lexi Kilfoyle having herself a year, but just Reagan Spencer, who's been, I mean, it's pretty obvious to everyone, she's been pitching behind Val Cagle. And so having to step up, Coach Rittman said, next woman up, we're facing adversity. We're going to deal with it head on. And she's having herself the best season that she's had all, all career long. And she's doing it at the right time when Clemson needs it the most. And to me, that's kind of what it's all about. You put in the work, you grind through, try to get yourself better, wait for your turn. Your turn comes and you are ready. She's like, let me take this, let me take this start against our rival. This is not something that she would have done two years ago. There's no way. She would have come in in relief if needed, but it's a big time start here, and there's a reason Coach Rittman puts her out there, and she's still holding it down with the shutout here in the fifth. And really just a sprinkling of hits tonight from South Carolina. They've had one in each inning, but not much more than that. Yeah, I think she's gotten better as the game's progressed, no doubt. She was getting a little bit too much of the plate in the first inning. South Carolina looked to be very comfortable, and I feel like she's starting to spread the plate, which is such a good feeling as a pitcher. Like right there, that ball is riding in, and you have her swing in. It looks good when it's coming in. She's missing with intention. Take a look at her line there and no walks. Come on. That's how you do it. That's how you keep your pitching coach and your head coach happy is not giving up those free passes, right? I mean, we hear it all the time and it sounds cliche or even said at nauseum, but it can make a huge difference. She's very comfortable pitching to contact too. And that's something that takes a couple years to really kind of like be okay with. There's so many freshmen that come in and they're so used to being, of course, as they should be, the best pitcher on their high school team, best pitcher on their club team. They're racking up 15 strikeouts, blowing it by people. 
and then you get to college and you're getting hit a little bit more than you're used to. And so sometimes it takes a year or two to kind of settle in and be comfortable with throwing to contact and doing that, you know, with intention. And check out this panicking. AB, <laughs> not afraid or <laughs> a panicking from the foul balls yeah. that are continuously off the bat of Julia Desiderio. Well, of course it's the catcher, right? It's always the catchers, they're the pesky ones. <laughs> And what a great at bat and look for Julia Desiderio to lead it off here for the Gamecocks in the bottom of the fourth. We talked about the Florida Gators sitting at number two in the conference behind the leading Lady Vols. Keegan Rothrock, what a great season she's had. First year of play in college. Kendra Falby and Kendra they trust. Tim Walton's group looking strong. That series against LSU was like, man. Whoa. So good. We go back we to the kicks in the yeah, cleats we're here. More mud <laughs> issues. We talk about the Gators. Idea. They've won all four of their conference series, right? Uh, Tennessee looking to make another deep run again. A double-digit seed South Carolina found themselves in the SEC tournament last year against the Lady Vols. Karen Weekly's got a number of different people that she can turn to on offense, and the pitching has been excellent as well. You mentioned Carlin Pickens. Strikeout, and that drop ball, Desiderio takes second base, and now she moves in the scoring position as Blankenship goes down swinging. Now the pitching in the SEC, I feel like, is without a doubt the strongest in the country. It's just like, man, there's so many aces. You get an ace like Vodder that comes in. Wasn't there prior? You return a freshman superstar like Carlin Pickens. She looks better than ever. Got like Maddie Penta, who's been at Auburn for it seems like such a long time, but she's still doing her thing. Like the pitching in the SEC is so fun to watch, day in and day out. Right now. Here's South Carolina in a good position. And a great base hit there from Denver Bryant, and they're gonna hold Desiderio at third base. Meanwhile, Bryant wisely advancing to second on the throw, so now two on, one out. And Gamecocks threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. This is a good sign for South Carolina, able to elevate. They've seen so many ground ball outs off of Spencer, so able to get something up in the air. I think this is a good hold at third, Desiderio. That ball was just hit too well. It was hit way too hard. I think this would have been an easy out tag at home, home plate. And right now with South Carolina down four runs, that run doesn't mean a whole lot. So you want to try and bounce. And now they put it in the hands of the lefty, Billy Thompson, Riley Blampeeth, first batter she'll face, fouls it off. A great outing for Reagan Spencer. Did exactly what she needed to do. And now you hand it over to your teammate. Hey, protect this, this lead, go get it. Leading on that one, fouled off again from Blampeeth. Willie Thompson, the senior out of Bedford, Virginia, picked up the win in game two in that series against Syracuse this past weekend. Gave up nine hits. A couple of walks, but struck out seven in route to victory. And this one scooped up and wisely holding on to it is Noller looking down Desiderio, making sure she stays put at third and tags out the batter. And now two away. Nowhere to 
go really for Desiderio. Unfortunately, that ball just hit too well. Lefty on lefty matchup. Zoe Leno, the senior, fouls it off. She's got thump in her back, disciplined hitter. Waiting for her to get going this season. Now would be a great time. The best opportunity of the night for South Carolina. Millie Thompson, she's not afraid to go inside to left-handed hitters. And between Leno and then Cummings on deck, these are the power bats for South Carolina. And so you want to equalize that and try and limit that power. Go in tight. She's confident in it. And now you're ahead. <laughs> that pitch is so dirty. Dirty indeed. But not biting. And Zoe Leno stands in to take another pitch. This time, she's rolled up. Caught looking on the outside part of the plate, and Millie Thompson. Currently tied for the best record in the West. Kinsey Fowler and Tiffany Green here with you. Palmetto series, big and state rivalry between Clemson and South Carolina. Right now, the Tigers have gotten the best of the Gamecocks thus far through five innings. Elena Vauder, who came in back in the third in relief, has only surrendered a run, but has helped to slow down this Tiger attack. She retires Abby Vieira to start off the sixth. That run in the fifth was unearned. Clemson able to just manufacture and kind of take advantage of that error and get a couple of key hits. Mackenzie Clark, Julia Moeller. Of course, we had the obstruction over, overturned. This one in the foul territory and a near catch from Bree Warren who almost got to it. You see the smiles after that great effort. Oh man, I wanted this for her. When you're full extension like that and you don't come up with it, like you just don't get this opportun opportunity very often. You can practice it all you want, but just like live is in and out. Yeah, she dove so hard she lost her glasses. <laughs> It's a great effort. in there for strike two. Counted two apiece to Kylie Johnson. All right, Gilder, one for two tonight. How's that one out of play? I like Vodder showing off the rides a little bit more. She has it in her arsenal. It's just everyone knows her as the drop ball girl, so you know, when you see her throw it, everyone's kind of surprised, me included. It's like, oh, yeah, she has that pitch. She can use it. It's just she's so dominant with her down stuff, so it's nice to see her offset that. 2-2, Two -two. and this one bounces off of Emma Sellers, who came in as a defensive substitution earlier. And Kylie Johnson is now at first. you're playing defense behind Elena Vodder, you've got to know you're going to get a ball like that. 
ground ball ready. Just kind of ate her up a little bit. Feet got still. We are going to give her an error. So three miscues on the night. Three errors on the night, rather. For South Carolina. Throw down and the runner is tracked down. Great play behind the dish from Desiderio. Great work by the middle <laughs> infielder as well to apply the tag. A little bit of a protected steal here from the Tigers, but it doesn't work. This is all about the throw and then the tag, quick tag. You can see Johnson doesn't get down early enough, so she's not sliding early enough, which allows Blankenship to tag her in the head, which is where the throw was coming in. It's coming in so sharp. You just kind of put your glove where the ball is and say, here you go. Thank you for your body part. Quick out. But if you can get down and slide earlier, her head's going to be lower to the dirt, and maybe you can avoid that tag. This one put on the ground by Oda, fielded well by Fodder. And that ends the inning. So South Carolina's got to get something to win in the series against Clemson. They are down tonight, but certainly not out of it in this top 25 matchup against their in-state rival. It's been handled for the majority of the series by Clemson, but South Carolina had their say the last time they met, trailing by four here tonight. The heart of the order due up with Jen Cummings, Keanu Jones, and Anaya Black due up. It's kind of interesting you think about, you know, they play a, a home and home, so it's just two games, and then if you meet up in postseason, well, it's bonus for the fans, but, you know, you take care of business on the road, and I feel like sometimes, I remember this when I played, when you're on the road, you have just like a little bit more business-like mentality sometimes. And there's like so much going on when you're the home team. You've got, you know, the rally towels and, you know, you get sometimes too amped up with your intro video playing and all the things. And when you're the, the road team, it's like, hey, we're here for business and this is what I'm, I'm here to do. And I've got one goal in mind. So it's just kind of interesting to think about how South Carolina went into their rival and took care of business, and now the Tigers and Clemson are trying to come into their rival's home turf and take care of business and return the favor. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Millie Thompson. That's how they ended the inning, and to start it off was Jim Cummings with the strikeout and good defense from Maddie Moore. Coach Rittman talked about just how spectacular she's been this season, and a nice charge and throw the 6-3 put out. Yeah, they've been shifting their defense a little bit because at times there have been some issues and, you know, trying to find the sweet spot for everyone. There's, you know, there's so many times where you're comfortable here and your teammates comfortable there and you've got to find that sweet recipe. And so everyone's so used to seeing Aaliyah Lungaleo at holding down short. Well, she's over at third and to her left is Maddie Moore, who's been at second the majority of the season and last season as well. But just goes to show, like, don't make it too big of a thing, right? If you can field a ground ball like you've done it your whole life, shift over and, you know, get a couple more reps. But it's it's pretty elementary. Field it and throw it to first. That's where you're going. And have confidence in your teammates that they're going to be comfortable and ready to go in their new positions as well. And Millie Thompson, who is just keeping these batters off balance, you saw the decrease in Velo there. Took something off of that one. Now ahead of the count, 0-2 to Anaya Black. But just the energy that Millie Thompson has come into this game with just adds another layer of lift for Clemson. Oh, it's so contagious. Like, I'm sitting, like, on the edge of my seat now because I'm, like, kind of rocking with her. I'm like, okay, she's bringing it. I need to be bringing it. What's going on here? 
Of the 17 pitches she's thrown tonight, 12 of them have been sh for strikes. And the senior steps up, looks in, delivers. Gets the strikeout. About Jayla Wright. Under one in the ERA, 11 wins this season. And of course, the engine of the offense for the Blue Devils, Claire Davidson. Just whether or not we will see Val Cagle in that one, missing her tonight. I mean, she, player of the year, right? So <laughs> best returning player for not only Clemson, but the country and missing her bat, you know, and you're of course missing her pitching, but you have to credit what the Tigers have been able to do in her absence. And you've got Reagan Spencer and Millie Thompson. And so I feel good about them in that aspect, but man, she swings such a good bat and you're missing her in the middle of, her, of your lineup. And the players who have rallied around and handled adversity well for these Clemson Tigers lifting up their teammate in her absence. But when we talked to John Rittman, I mean, he was just like, yeah, she's like a foundational piece of this program and what she's been able to do and the success that she's been able to amass. It's tough to replace production like that, but it's an all hands on deck type of deal. Two time ACC player of the year is Val Cagle. She watches on, concussion protocol, hit her head while trying to make a catch last weekend against Syracuse. We certainly hope that she makes her return to the field as soon as possible and safely as possible. And you just, you know, you're happy about the opportunity and what you're seeing production-wise from those that are in her place. You, of course, talk about the pitchers, but to me, I'm also thinking about Julia Noller, the freshman who's gone yard tonight, who's stepping in at first base. That's a big ask, and especially batting in the four hole, which is usually where Kegel hangs out. So those little things, you know, you look down, down the road and you predict what's going to happen, but you think about a week like this where other players are going to get more opportunities and then that makes the team better and everyone's better for it. Of course, you don't ever want anyone to be hurt or have the player of the year be sitting out, but you've got to take what's given and, and do the best with the opportunity that you've got. Well, I love it too because you think the freshmen, they don't know what they don't know, but they come in and somehow do whatever is needed or necessary as batter is retired. And Maddie Moore trots back to the dugout. I'll tell you, for Clemson, they're looking to notch a win against an SEC opponent. They've come up short and in heartbreaking fashion the last three times they faced off against a team out of the Southeastern Conference. We go back to obviously that March 20th meeting, the last time they faced South Carolina. That was in extra innings. And then they went to extras with Tennessee, a one run loss to the Lady Vols. And similar fashion in eight innings to the Bulldogs out of Georgia. Sharply hit and a base hit for Alex Brown. The second baseman goes all the way back to the wall. She wants more, goes for three and the triple for Alex Brown. Well, she's already had a double tonight, so that's boring. We're gonna push it. <laughs> Go get yourself an extra base when you've got speed like this. Hits it so well, just deep into the gap. And it's right in front of you, so that's so fun as a hitter because you can watch it. You don't even need your coach to tell you because you, you know what your speed is. You've got the throw. I can beat this. It's electric. Fourth triple of the season for the junior out of Savannah, Savannah Georgia. And so 60 feet from home. 
And another insurance run pending for Clemson. The infield playing in now for South Carolina. Defensive substitution over at second base. Carly Shelton is now in the infield. Shelton, freshman, graduated high school a year early to join the Gamecocks, a local product. Kinsey Clark, the remaining patient here, was hit by a pitch, singled her last time up. 30 RBI on the season. Second on the team behind Cagle. Mackenzie Clark had a home run off of Vodder in that March matchup. He's on the first pitch early in the game. A little bit different at bat here, just being very patient. And the walk to McKenzie Clark. The first given up by Vodder tonight. Yeah, Vodder probably just being a little bit careful. And it's one of those things where it's like not a conscience thing or you know, you're not trying to be careful. It's just your body remembers what happened last time you faced the hitter and you know, just dancing around the zone a little bit with the number three hitter for the Tigers. We kind of joked and chatted in the break just about how both of these pitchers have just been throwing strikes. And you look at the efficiency that we saw from Vodder, 50 of her 74 pitches, strikes. Strike in there to Nola. Yeah, just the last couple of batters, Vodder isn't getting the swing and misses on her drop out of the zone. And to me, that just tells me that's data. Like that's a lot of at bats from one team against one pitcher. And so she's having to elevate her drop up in the zone a little bit, which is not what she wants to do. Number two, McKinsey Clark. We have her sixth steal of the season. She's standing at second. Alex Brown at third after the triple. And pulled through the three, four hole, and that's gonna score a run. So an RBI single for Julia Noller. And boy, what a great night she's had tonight. Her second ribby of the game. Both of her hits tonight, the home run, and then this kind of poke through the right side have come with two strikes. And that is impressive when you talk about a true freshman. It's elite, just patience and knowing your zone, trusting your swing. She has so much power that wasn't even a pretty swing. In the game. And the sack bunt laid down, the squeeze is on. And great execution there from Clemson. This is a great idea from the Tigers offensively, trying to catch the defense off guard, and that's exactly what they did. This is Vodder coming to field the ball herself, and it's just a little bit of a mystery. Like, you can feel the runner is going to be clearly safe at home, and so you're not sure, should I go two, should I go one? Is my infielder in my way? It's just causing chaos. And that small ball and that speed, and that's what you can do. Try and speed this inning up. I hope Jen Cummings was all right. It looks like she got hit by the ball, hit, hit on the throw. to hit in an error and Vodder looking the runner back to third base and she is out. No. She's safe. 
Excuse me. I think they called obstruction on this. In the top of the seventh, and this lead beginning to balloon for Clemson. Just very uncharacteristic for South Carolina's defense. Four errors recorded tonight. This one from Vieira. Another run conceded on the fielder's choice, RBI fielder's choice from Vieira. Kylie Johnson, 0 for 3 tonight. Over the second base, and that in. Breakouts, out of five batters. She's just pumping strikes. She's only throwing a couple of balls. It's also a lot easier to just confidently hit the zone when your team's adding some insurance runs. It just feeds the animal. Like, okay, you give me more runs, I give you more strikes right back. Bree Warren, Julia Desiderio, and Brooke Blankenship do up. That's seven, eight, nine in the order for South Carolina. Strikes out the first batter of the inning, and Bree Warren, and one retired. And she's doing it with three pitches. You should have to work a little bit harder for your strikeouts. She, she would be so frustrating to face, because you know that the ball's gonna be low. She's not going upstairs, if ever. That's as high as it's gonna be right there. One pitch and one out for Clemson <laughs> before they can shut out these Gamecocks. They've been shut out three of the last four games if the score holds as is. And a chance to get some revenge from that March 20th meeting and South Carolina knocks their first win in this series. We saw Reagan Spencer really set the tone in the circle. A great outing for her, and Millie Thompson's trying to shut the door here. No two to Lincolnship. Brooke Blankenship will get another crack at it here. Expecting a changeup on this next pitch. Look at that. Every single batter, she's pumping you with the strike. And you know it's coming, so as a hitter, you're going, am I going to see hard? Am I going to see slow? And there's, they look exactly the same when it comes in. She's not throwing, you know, 70 miles an hour like Kegel does, but she's throwing low 60s, and then the change is sometimes in the 40s, so that is a, a huge contrast. But it's the same spin, it's the same zone. Frustrating. 
Thompson who has struck out four of the six batters that she's faced. Even count here. The pitch on the way. This went over to Alex Brown and that ends the ball game. The shutout recorded and complete. The Yo, listen up, let me tell you about love and loss Our hearts collide and lines are crossed In the depths of passion, we find our way But sometimes love leads us astray From the highs of ecstasy to the lows of pain Love's a roller coaster, driving us insane In the warmth of affection, we find our bliss But when it's gone, we're left with emptiness Tears we shed and the battles we fought We'll find solace in the lessons taught In the depths of despair We search for light But sometimes love fades Like stars in the night In the silence of solitude We mourn the loss But through the pain We'll rise like moss for love's a journey with twists and turns But even in darkness, a new flame burns In the ashes of heartache, a phoenix rises With love as our guide, we'll find new surprises Love and love in the journey of life Will we make our stand? Through the tears we shed and the battles we fought We'll find solace in the lessons taught For let's cherish the love we have In this fleeting life For in love's embrace We find no strife And though loss may come We'll carry on For love's eternal flame Love and loss, we find our strength in the ebb and flow. We'll go to any length, for in the tapestry of life, love's the thread binding us together even after we're dead.